I am indeed uh, a large-scale sculptor, but my life has kind of gone in many different directions since being born as an artist, which is what I think I really was meant to do. Um, it's all quite by accident. It's all very fabulous, and uh, I couldn't actually leave it if I wanted to. Um, I moved to the, to the Bay Area for two years, 20 years ago. So clearly, um, something else is, is going on. Um, so I'm the founder of American Steel Studios. This is a six-acre warehouse in West Oakland. We have about 170 tenants, most of whom are doing the most remarkable things I've ever seen. And uh, it's a, a dynamic space because there is so much diversity and so many skill sets there. There's seldom anything that we can't do. There's Someone in the building has an answer to a question you have. How did this come about? Uh, essentially, I needed a space to make really big art, and there was this really big empty warehouse. Um, I didn't get it for a dollar, uh, but um, the rent is affordable, which allows me to keep the rent affordable for my tenants so that we can uh, all do what we want to do there. Uh, in the first year, which was 2005, I started a project there for Burning Man, uh, and in that process brought in about 180 people or so doing everything imaginable from uh, logistics and shipping to welding, uh, you know, some design work, uh, promotional things, first aid, whatever it was that was necessary. So again, this people showed up because they wanted to participate. They didn't necessarily have the skills, but having this dynamic uh, happening or starting to happen there really encouraged folks to have some uh, sense of empowerment about finding solutions or just figuring it out or someone will absolutely show you how to do it. So in the first couple of years between 05 and 07, literally tons and tons of art were produced at American Steel because I started expanding my footprint there and uh, renting space to other people. And the art that's pr produced in West Oakland goes virtually all around the world. Um, something that's been painful to me until very, very recently is that none of this art is exhibited in Oakland. Uh, Oakland is very unaware of, of, or has been very unaware of this tremendous asset that they have. We'll get to that part of the story in a minute. <laughs> so what makes the building itself work is the infrastructure that's there for large-scale artists is really hard to find in the Bay Area. It's hard to find in a lot of places, actually, in a, in a form that you can actually utilize it and afford to utilize it. So we have bridge cranes. If you're going to build a 12-ton sculpture, chances are at some point you're going to have to move it. So that is a very helpful thing. We have a drive-through truck access, so you can just put it on your trailer, truck just picks it up and scoots it out the other side of the building. So it's a very beautiful flow, likewise with bringing large materials in, uh, into a studio space to work on. It's open 24 hours, seven days a week, and there are very few hours where there's not noise being made there. Uh, so another part about how it works is it's a space that's run by artists for artists. My property manager is a structural fabricator. And she's a great property manager. I am very, very lucky to have Sally Brown on, on the crew. But I think also just having, again, one of our biggest assets is that community, is that diverse gene pool that constantly is changing and growing and uh, just always offering something new. So back in the way back when, uh, so again, this is a, a six-acre building. You when I started working there, I could see from one exterior wall two city blocks away to the other exterior wall unimpeded. There was nothing in the building. So this was one of the first um, really fun projects that was built there by Tom Kennedy, a prolific art car artist, uh, the Topsy Turvy School Bus. And this being one of my first tenants, I thought, well, this is going to be fun. Uh, and it is. Uh, so uh, you may have seen uh, Big Rig Jig by Mike Ross. Uh, it was built there in 07. Uh, Jess and Flux built this uh, in 11. So a lot of the large-scale Burning Man pieces that you've seen over the last many years have come from American Steel or like spaces. Uh, I know there's a, a spot up in Reno that's uh, starting to get some really great uh, traction as well. Uh, Zach Hoppin came from Atlanta to build this piece here uh, in Oakland. Uh, another piece by Mike Ross that's being installed. So Mike Ross came from New York City to Oakland to American Steel to build a piece for an installation in Seattle. Uh, the bottle cap gazebo, this, this was uh, a really sweet project to see happen for a lot of us because it was the next generation of makers and designers and artists. 
Uh, this is the son of one of, our, one of my tenants and his whole crew putting this together. Um, I am constantly getting interns showing up at my door unannounced, which is challenging, but I, I always find something for them to do. So this year in particular, two kids from the UK showed up and I, they told me they knew how to weld. They really didn't know how to weld. And so I, I put them on the bottle cap, uh, pushed them in the direction of that because they're apparently very good work woodworkers. But again, if, if you show up at American Steel and you're not sure what you want to do or how to do it, we're going to figure out how to make it happen for you in some fashion. Uh, this is a piece by Kate Roudenbush. Half of this was built in New York while the other half was being built in Oakland. And it was they, the two pieces met together for the first time at Burning Man, which is a very scary thing. I don't think I would ever uh, endeavor. So in addition to art, we have a lot of innovators at American Steel. Uh, Rechar is developing uh, more fuel efficient cook stoves and methods of uh, heating and cooking and uh, st sterilizing water uh, to be used around the world to really diminish the environmental footprint of that activity, which actually does consume quite a lot of fuel. Uh, Nick Dong is an installation artist. Uh, he recently had a piece uh, at the Smithsonian 40 Under 40 show, which is really exciting, although he's now 40. Can't do that again. Um, and this this uh, men's amplio piece is a really interesting marriage of art and science. So this is a giant brain sculpted in a fashion that you wear an EEG headset as you're looking at it and your thoughts are mimicked by the brain. So it's got an LED light component. I didn't grab a good photo of it, I'm sorry. LED light component that will go very quickly with red when you're excited and calm blue when you're not. And when you reach this perfect line of harmony, these fire jets go off on the top of it just <laughs> to imbalance everything all over again. Our secret ingredient tenant is uh, we do have a beer brewer uh, in the building. That's often very helpful. <laughs> so once you get to a part where you or I somehow found this, this whole big pot of stuff going on and all this amazing energy happening, it became uh, aware to me and to other people that that there just needed to be sort of uh, several different outlets for this to happen very consistently. We do a lot of tours through American Steel with young ones, with elderly folks, uh, uh, students from a variety of different programs. Uh, we do welding lessons with uh, all ages of people. Uh, we do have very specialized internships. So someone can express an interest in doing an internship at American Steel. They have a 70, 170 artists they can try to woo to, to get something going with them. Uh, a, lot, a lot of them end up in, in my space working on their own sculpture that is you know, at some point installed in their schoolyard, which is really, really exciting to me and uh, I know to them as well. Uh, I've got a couple examples. This was from last fall. Um, UC Berkeley's landscape design class was given a project to design a sculpture park in a two acre vacant lot next to American Steel where we happen to park some of our art. Uh, to make it a more environmentally friendly, uh, more fully experiential type of, of space. This student was obviously compelled by all the gra graffiti in Oakland, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so this is uh, just a couple of different examples of what their, their uh, s sort of semester project was. So what happens, and another way to bring this out is doing partnerships with other groups, uh, which is going to grow my gene pool, spread our energy out further, and allow us to do more. Uh, Groundation Foundation is a group of people who are building a living wall on the front of the building. As I mentioned, we do have a bit of graffiti in the neighborhood, and the best, I think, possible way to, to respond to that is just wrap it in plants and have the biggest chia pet warehouse in the world. <laughs> um, so the Rose Foundation, uh, we work with their students to do different types of garden projects around the building, always being mindful of water consumption, uh, native plants, and uh, prefer uh, pollinators, what, what is preferable to grow there. We have two 3,000 gallon rain barrels in the building and about a half a dozen uh, other various sizes. So we're, we're doing a lot of water reclamation of our own there. Uh, Big Top Steel is a partnership with uh, Clowns Without Borders and Prescott Circus School. Design, this was a free day uh, camp kind of thing for kids over the summer to learn performing arts and just circus trickery. Uh, we're going to be doing it again this year and I hope we're, we're uh, going to do it again every year. I hope we can keep going bigger with that. It's a lot of fun. 
uh, working with the Continuation High School at the corner of American Steel, we're bringing a mural together to actually put onto one of the facades of, of Am Steel. Um, the neighborhood is, is quite challenged, so for these students to have something they can point at and be proud of and feel connected to is, is a very exciting thing for them. Given the concept of how do they envision Oakland, we got everything from guns to diplomas. Like the, the, the neighborhood that these kids are living in is very challenged, but they do have this optimism and hope about going beyond or at least helping inspire some change in the neighborhood as we collectively work together, all of us throughout the community. So historically, uh, the art being produced in Oakland, West Oakland specifically, hasn't been getting, or Oakland at all, hasn't been getting very much press until very recently, and I think that's due to a lot of the amazing stuff that's been happening there. And I've grabbed only just a, okay, so here, for example, this is a Russian power tool magazine. <laughs> so the press, the press of what's happening there is going all around the world, but there's really not much resonating about it among certain entities in Oakland itself. Uh, this is from a Chinese contemporary lifestyle magazine. I can't even read any of what this says, <laughs> but apparently it was, it was well received. <laughs> so this is, uh, these four words right here have consumed much of the last three or four years of my life. There's a specific plan for the, the district of Oakland that uh, American Steel is in and a lot of the art studios are in, which initially when I happened upon it was an abomination of uh, just paving over the community and the history and the potential that is there and you know, working to bring in the high rise Twitter campuses and this and that and over many, many meetings with many people working uh, shoulder to shoulder, we actually got this plan to include another chapter specifically for the arts. Uh, last Tuesday I was there and they acknowledged that there's uh, something called the, they called it a, um, uh, I don't remember the word, it was a, something like a, a precious industrial zone that they need to protect mm -hmm. to prevent these high rises from coming in. So in the three years that we've been kind of uh, campaigning towards this, this really has come around. And they do understand the value of the industrial work uh, that is done there. They definitely are understanding the value of the arts and what can be, be, can be contributed. That was a long battle. It was the less sexy part of doing anything uh, that I've done in the last couple of years. But I am very joyful that uh, we're making, we have made some progress. <laughs> so, and uh, another uh, project that I've kind of been bringing to fruition, I'm one of the founding mem members of the Oakland Makers. So this is uh, an organization that will bring some sort of cohesion to the creative entities and makers and tinkerers and innovators in Oakland and uh, kind of will be stronger together in a way. We can move together, we can get the recognition, advertising, events, and perhaps, you know, farmer's market space, whatever it is we want, want to be able to sell our wares and really just be able to market ourselves uh, as, as a, the amazing diverse entity that we are. Uh, I also have been working uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the Bay Area. There's this bridge thing, and there's this park, and we want to put art in the park. It seems like a really simple idea. Uh, this is something I've been kind of pounding away at for about four years now. The park is, is well-suited, and I've done enough uh, sort of consulting with them to secure 200 tons of steel from the old Bay Bridge when it's demolish, uh, demolished to be used for art in the park, which is great. Which but park? I, uh, Gateway Park. Uh, it's at the foot of, of the Bay Bridge in, in Oakland. But I also want more steel for the rest of us. So uh, I'm doing uh, another campaign to really secure the steel just as a public resource. So if there is a civic installation or a public art project and someone gets an RFP, they get a grant and they can call and say, hey, we need six tons of I-beams from the Bay Bridge for this project we're working on, we can say, that's great, we've got it. There's, there's a lot of history. This bridge has been part of the skyline and connected all of these communities for so long. So I'd really, we're working really hard to keep it local and not have it get sent off to the next big um, construction project. So among other things, I think I'm great, 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, I was awarded, very much to my surprise, the 2013 Alameda County Arts Leadership Award, which was great. I don't really know what that means. Um, I hope it doesn't mean I have to go to more meetings or people are asking me to do more. My, my plate is very full, but it, every day, 
is equally exhilarating and exhausting. Um, I have three full-time employees, and I think I'm growing to the point where I can get more, and these people will actually be doing work out in the community, not specific to the warehouse, and uh, just keep all of these good ripple effects moving out bigger and bigger. So that's, uh, that's American Steel. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>